today I'm going to show you how to port a Jedi Academy model to Jedi Outcast. I'm going to use Blender 2.69 with the uh, Jedi Academy plugin suite, which uh, is the reason I'm using 2.69 because it has not been tested with 2.7 and onwards yet, so I'm sticking to what works. So I've installed the plugin and enabled them in the uh, properties in the preferences here and uh, yeah now we can get started so first I'm gonna delete all the things uh, in the scene here because they will be distracting and then I'm gonna import the uh, Jedi Academy Google 2 model um, in my Jedi Academy game database folder where I have unpacked the model this is kind of important the paths in the model.glm which we're going to be in importing are relative to base so in order for the importer to be able to locate the skeleton and the textures etc it needs to know the base path which is this part of the uh, path and if there's no game data folder it won't be able to do so automatically so in that case you need to enter the base path uh, manually but in my case it can be automatically determined so I can just go to import I'm gonna press Alt Z or down here could go to texture and we can see our imported textured Roche I'm gonna make the outliner a little bit bigger here so we can see the hierarchy we have scene root which is where everything re related to the model is imported to and then we have three levels of detail so we want to have all of those in the uh, Jedi Outcast model, so I'm just going to keep all of them. And then there's the uh, skeleton root, which uh, I'm going to enable X-ray for, so we can see it. This is the Jedi Academy skeleton that is currently used by this model. And I'm going to go ahead and rename it, because we want to also import the Jedi Outcast model. And if there's already a skeleton root, it's going to try to merge them. We don't want that. So I've renamed the object to uh, Jedi Academy, and now I'm going to rename the data the object uses to um, skeleton root JKA as well. Uh, Blender separates between objects and data. You can have multiple objects with the same data, so they all are copies of the same skeleton in this case. So we need to rename both of those. And then we can import the uh, GLA from uh, Jedi Outcast. So now I'm in my uh, Jedi Outcast folder. Again, game database. Uh, I've unpacked the model right into the base folder. This way, the importer can guess the base path. Again, this part based on the presence of game data. Otherwise, I would have to enter it down here. I don't have to, so I'm just going to press import. And now we have a second skeleton here. I'm going to move it on the y-axis for the moment so we can see it. This is the uh, Jedi Outcast skeleton. Our goal is to use this instead of the current skeleton. And there are not many problems with that. For the most part, the Jedi Outcast skeleton actually has more bones than Jedi Academy. For example, you can see the hands are very detailed in Jedi Outcast, whereas in Jedi Academy they only use three fingers with two bones each instead of all five with three each. But the bones that are still there in Jedi Academy are, all have the same names as the ones in Jedi Outcast, so they map perfectly. The only issue are bones that are missing in Jedi Outcast. I'm gonna enter the post mode here so we can move bones around and have the uh, model follow. So if I move the arm, uh, everything will follow. So new bones include this L tail and R tail, so left and right tail bone. They, I don't know any models which actually use these, so we can just ignore them. But a bone that is very used in every single Jedi Academy model is this L hang tech bone, the uh, bone for moving the uh, lightsaber in the left hand because sometimes the lightsaber is moved outside of the hand, for example, when you spin your sabers around yourself in the uh, kata move when dual wielding. So I'm going to move the bone to the side. And there's a tech here. We can't see it because we're looking at it, its back. I'm going to enable wireframe mode. 
so we can see it. There's a text surface here which marks the position of the saber. And if we go into the uh, data tab here, we see the vertex groups which are used uh, to define the bone which it is attached to, and it's currently attached to the L hang tech bone. Now, the bone does not exist in Jedi Outcast. The tech, however, does exist, but it's uh, for the Jedi Outcast model simply weighted, uh, weighted to the hand bone, left hand, which is also present in the Jedi Outcast model. So here yeah, we have left hand, just as in Jedi Academy, and we're going to change the weighting of this bone from L hand tech bone to L hand. You can see it move here because now it's no longer moving together with this bone but with the hand bone. Now there's two more of these hand tags. If we go to the uh, objects panel uh, top, we can see the go to properties. It's the L hand tag, it's a tag. Anyway, so since there are three levels of detail, we have three tags, one for each level of detail, so we have to change it three times. By moving the bone in post mode, I can actually easily see everything that's attached to it. And at this point, we're done with changing weights. Now it's just a matter of changing uh, the modifiers here. We want the object in the skin modifier to be changed from skeleton root JKA to skeleton root which is the Jedi Outcast skeleton. And since we would have to do this for every single surface, and there's a lot of them, I'm not going to do this by hand, especially since there are dozens of tags for every level of detail as well, which also need all these changes. It's easy to miss one, so I'm just going to use a script. You can open a Python console in Blender, which I'm going to do right now. And I'm gonna say this skeleton is Blender Python data objects uh, skeleton root. So now I have the uh, skeleton uh, object in a variable, and I can just say uh, for object in BPY data objects Blender Python. Uh, object data for each object if there is a skin in the modifiers so if the object has a skin modifier then we take that skin modifier and change its object to the skeleton we just extracted now we've done that we see all the uh, objects now have the uh, skeleton root object in the skin modifier. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, I can close the console again, go into object mode, move the skeleton back into the model. I've moved it exactly three units by typing in three uh, on the keyboard when moving it. So I could move it right back, but otherwise I could just press N and go to the location here and enter 0, 0, 0 to move it back. So now we can just take the uh, Jedi Academy skeleton and remove it. We are now weighted to the Jedi Outcast skeleton. If I go into post mode again, this time using Control plus Tab uh, instead of going down here, we can see if we... okay. If we move the bones around, the mesh follows. It's been properly weighted to it now. So at this point, we can just go to export Jedi Academy Cool 2 model and now I'm in the Jedi Outcast base models players. I'm just gonna create a new directory here for Roche Pennon. Enter it. And save it as model.glm. Again, it's important that the base path can be determined in my case automatically because there's game data here. That's because the GLA, which we're going to use, the uh, skeleton file, 
is again relative to the base path. So it says models players humanoid humanoid without the .gli extension. That's perfectly fine. That's exactly what we want. So I can just save it as GLM. There are no errors. And now it's just a matter of copying over the skin files, the textures, the shaders. And then we're good to go. So yeah, good luck with your parting efforts.